Hey everybody, it's time for an update on my 125 gallon native tank. I think once again, thanks to my awesome viewers, I got the information I was looking for. And that is in regards to the mysterious sort of spots that I've got on my shiners here. They definitely aren't ick, I know that. But I wasn't sure what they were. I've never seen anything like this in my aquarium before. And several people suggested that it was freshwater velvet. And I've looked it up and I am pretty confident that that's what it is. It definitely looks like freshwater velvet. Now it doesn't look like it's really far advanced at this point. But it's pretty well advanced. And I really need to get started on treatment for this. I've been using Paragard because I didn't know what was wrong with this tank. But I have found out that Paragard does not contain the medication that you need. Um, there's two different drugs that will kill the parasite that causes the freshwater velvet. Uh, one of them is, I believe, Acroflavine and API Fungus Cure. Not API General Cure, but API Fungus Cure is uh, Acroflavine is the active ingredient in it. So I've ordered that and it will be here tomorrow. So unfortunately there's not a lot I can do to get started uh, on treating the tank tonight other than adding some salt to the tank. I looked at the natural remedies and one of the things you can do is treat it with salt, heat, and darkness. The parasite partially lives off of the flesh of the fish but it also get some of its energy from photosynthesizing, which I find to be fascinating. And if you darken the tank or you black out the tank, you really uh, stress the parasite out. It doesn't get all of its nutrition from the fish. It needs to photosynthesize. So you really, really weaken the parasite by blacking the tank out. But you've got to black it out for three weeks. And I obviously am not going to be blacking this tank out for three weeks. The other thing you do is you turn up the heat. And that is for the same reasons that I discussed in my video about ick recently. The uh, increased heat will speed the life cycle up and it actually runs the whole process through a lot faster. And you get over to the other side of it a lot quicker if you turn the heat up to about 82 degrees. So this tank is probably 80-ish anyway, so I don't really need to turn the heat up. The, uh, the, the life cycle is going to move fast enough. And at this point, I don't want it to move any faster until I can get the medications in there. Um... But the third thing I can do is salt the, the tank, and that is what we are going to do tonight. I've actually had a few people asking me about salt recently, and I've had a few questions about how much salt is too much salt. And I always tell people, you can put a lot more salt in an aquarium than you think you can. And tonight I'm going to demonstrate that and show you just how much salt we're really going to put in this tank. First of all, I should also mention that when I talked about adding salt for the ick... I suggested that the salt did not have any direct treatment on the ick itself and the only thing it was really doing was providing stress relief for the fish. The fish need to extract sodium from the water and by adding more sodium to the water it allows for the fish to extract it much more easier, uh, more easily and that reduces the stress on the fish. But someone pointed out, and I should have mentioned this, that the other thing salt does when you put it in the tank is it reduces the likelihood of secondary infections because when ick or in this case the freshwater velvet uh, erupts from the skin and goes into its next life cycle stage that rupture in the skin is maybe a tiny little open wound but it's still an open wound it still is exposing the animal to bacterial infections, secondary fungal infections, all sorts of stuff, and having plenty of salt in the tank actually reduces the chances of getting infected and allows the hit fish to heal a lot faster and, and, and reduces the chance of those secondary uh, infections. So while we're waiting for my cure to show up, we are going to salt this tank, and the amount of salt that you were supposed to put in here is between two and three teaspoons per gallon. And I always tell people you can do one teaspoon per gallon all day long and that won't affect even the most sensitive fish. 
but you can go up to a tablespoon per gallon in aquarium salt. Now, this is aquarium salt, sodium chloride, not marine salts. You know, this is not instant ocean. This is just regular old table salt, sodium chloride. In fact, this is great value, plain salt. This is the non-iodized but it's not special kosher salt. It's not aquarium salt. I spent 40 cents um, a container, and I got four containers of it. So, boom, there you go. That's my salt for this aquarium. Now, obviously, I can't just add water to this and dissolve all of that salt into that. But that is just shy of eight cups. And this that's all I had. This is actually a little less than three teaspoons per gallon that's going to go into this tank. So, three teaspoons per gallon is what I'm using to treat for... Um, this parasite, but for people that just want to use aquarium salt in their tank, if you've got fish like mollies or fish that are not very sensitive to salt, you can go up to a tablespoon per gallon of regular aquarium salt and not really uh, affect the fish. Now, you will affect some sensitive fish at that point. I wouldn't recommend that if you've got neons or corys. Um, plants tend to get affected when you get up to about a tablespoon per gallon. You're getting up to the high end of salt at that point. But that is the upper limits for those of you that are wondering about adding aquarium salt. Uh, you can go up to a tablespoon per gallon and still be uh, well within the realm of fresh water. Um, so this three teaspoons per gallon, and in fact, we're actually using a little less than three teaspoons per gallon, will be no big deal. In fact, every fish in this tank, with the possible exception of the pleco on the bottom, I don't know about the pleco, but every other animal in this tank is urihaline, so I really could honestly convert this to a brackish tank, and it wouldn't phase any of the fish in here at all. Um, I don't know about the pleco, as I said, and I'm not even sure if the crayfish in here are still alive. I was looking around for them this morning, but I found out that the Paragard that I've been using is not for use with certain animals, and Inverts is one of them. So I may have actually killed off my um, crayfish by adding the Paragard. So what I'm going to do now is a water change, and then as I'm filling the tank back up, I'll start adding this salt in it, and I'll get the tank well salted, and then by tomorrow we can start adding that API uh, fungus cure. Now, I did shoot a video first thing this morning when we turned the lights on, and I was doing that in hopes of catching the crayfish out, which I often do, but this morning we didn't. What we did get to see was some really crazy behavior from my... Uh, white sucker fish in here one of them was darting and dashing around like it was being chased by something and it actually came up and out of the tank I don't know if it actually came out on video I think I was kind of holding the camera like this and it shot up here and it went back in it landed all the way down there it came up higher than my light bar when it came up out of the tank and so that's what that white sucker fish did not one of those little minnows but that sucker fish down on the bottom is what did that it was one of these guys came up and out of the tank like that. It actually splashed water all over my lights. So that's what kind of alarmed me, that something really is going on in this tank. It's not my imagination. These fish are definitely um, suffering from something, and you can see all the flashing that's going on, all those little minnows in there flashing like crazy. So help is on the way. We're going to get the tank salted, and then by tomorrow we'll have the uh, actual medication going on in here. So thanks again to all of those of you out there that uh, pointed me in the right direction and offered me your suggestions and recommendations, whether they were right or wrong, uh, is irrelevant to me. I appreciate all of them, and I know all of them were meant with the best intention, uh, and that's the important part to me. We did get to the bottom of what it is, uh, so that's all that really matters. We're going to get this taken care of, and you all are more than welcome to join me. Um, in my little journey here getting rid of this stuff lost my train of thought there oh when i was talking about the video i shot this morning i'm not going to post that video over here on uh youtube it really amounted to nothing more than me kind of thinking out loud and speculating about what was going on we never did see the crayfish which was what my intention was uh so what i'm going to do is post that video over on my patreon page i do that with uh you know what i think of as my failed youtube videos or videos i just for whatever reason decide i'm not going to post here on youtube i'll often post those over on my patreon page as well as the you know outdoor stuff and things like that that i do um 
So look for that if you're one of my patrons or if you're interested in seeing that video, uh, you can go check out my Patreon page and check that out. But I figure we're going to be getting enough videos of this tank over the next few days while we deal with this issue. And I feel like I've already shot enough videos of this tank over the last few days that I don't want to just keep cranking them out. Uh, so again, I'm not going to post that turning the lights on video here. But I will post that over on Patreon, so go check that out if you're interested. So there you go, everybody. The process will begin, and one last time I'll show you. Let me show you some uh, perspective here. That's a standard measuring cup. And then that's the iced tea pitcher that I have full of salt. So that much salt is going in this tank. Probably over the next two or three hours. I won't put all this in at once, but uh, I will start dissolving it in water and adding it to the tank as I fill it back up from its water change. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed all that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss all the updates on this tank or anything else I've got coming up. There's always something good happening around here, and you don't want to miss any of it. So, thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.